I am 100% convinced that uh, Kevin Sabet is crip walking and not like us this morning after the huge victories that he and Project Sam team scored uh, uh, last night uh, by the hating ass House GOP. And I'll be delivering part one of a two-part story. It was uh, uh, updated by. Uh, uh, it will be updated by Soham Shah because it was a, there was a major update to um, um, this story mm-hmm. also this morning from Kyle Yeager. So, um, Mirwa, in a moment, Kyle Yeager reported yesterday evening that a key GOP-led House committee has approved the large-scale spending bill that would block the Justice Department's desire to reschedule cannabis while also amending a long-standing rider protecting medical cannabis states from federal interference by adding new language to authorize and enhance penalties for sales near public schools and parks. Oh, not just public schools, schools and parks. Mm-hmm. But wait, there's more. Members also rejected an amendment that would have extended those Protections to all state and tribal cannabis programs, including those allowing recreational use and sales. Now, any sane person would have uh, thought that President Joe Biden's performance in life right now would surely be enough to make the GOP chill the fuck out for once with all the fear mongering and uh, dog whistles that they've become known for. But, you know, here we are. Yeager reported that a at a House uh, Appropriations Committee hearing on Tuesday, the panel passed legislation covering commerce, justice, science, and regula- and related agencies, CJS, with a hostile marijuana provisions attached. The bill, as approved in committee, would block the Justice Department from using its funds to reschedule or deschedule marijuana. Per Article A, Democratic-led amendment from Representative Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut, the ranking member of the committee that would have struck the uh, the provision and a number of other unrelated sections from the bill, uh, was defeated in a vote of 20 to 30. GOP senators have separately tried to block the administration from rescheduling cannabis as part of a standalone bill filed last September, but that proposal has not received a hearing or vote. Yeager says that including such a ban in key annual spending legislation is a way for opponents to force the issue forward. However, it's far from clear that the Democratic-controlled Senate would go along with the proposal. Legislation as approved by the panel on Tuesday still includes a longstanding rider to prevent Department of Justice from using its funds to interfere in the implementation of state medical marijuana programs that has been part of federal law since 2014. But the committee added new language stipulating that the Justice Department can still enforce a section of the U.S. Code that calls for increased penalties for dis- distributing cannabis within a thousand feet of in an elementary school, vocational school a college, playground, or public housing. <laughs> no shit. You can't smoke weed anywhere anywhere near the projects now. So, uh, uh, uh. You've never been able to. Get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. Um, the amendment prevents the federal government from imposing its antiquated cannabis regulations uh, on states, and it's time the federal government keep up with the times and stop hindering progress, Lee, co-chair of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus, said. After multiple Republican members spoke out against the proposal, the committee defeated in uh, it in a voice vote and no roll call was requested. Of course, it was Representative Dave Joyce of Ohio, another Cannabis Caucus co-chair, as the only GOP lawmaker to speak out in favor of the amendment. We should be empowering states to regulate the product how they see fit. And this amendment would help uh, uh, just do that. The disparity between state and federal policies have created a loophole that has allowed illicit operators to thrive and jeopardize public safety. It's time to close that loophole, make sure products are safe and out of the hands of youth. Representative Matt Cartwright of um, Pennsylvania, Democrat, uh, the ranking member on the CJS Appropriations Subcommittee, also spoke in favor of the measure, arguing that it's about aligning law enforcement efforts between state and federal entities. But most of the speeches addressing the amendment from Republican members criticized the proposal. CJS Appropriations Subcommittee Chairman Hal Rogers of Kentucky, for example, argued that it was premature given the administration's push to reschedule cannabis that's currently going through the rulemaking process. 
Jaeger notes that uh, what Rogers declined to mention is that he secured a separate provision in the CJS bill that would block the Justice Department from using its funds to reschedule or deschedule marijuana. Representative Andy Harris of Maryland, the dude that tried to bring a gun onto the House floor back in 2021, he's, you know, he got expelled. He did his, uh, he did his time at uh, juvie, and he is back. <sighs> The natural uh, vocal prohibitionist who has championed a longstanding rider to prevent Washington, D.C. from using its tax dollars to legalize cannabis sales also opposed Lee's proposal. Harris argued that it would tie hand, the hands of DEA to go after illicit operators in legal territories. As Lee pointed out in her closing remarks, however, the amendment is more narrowly focused on preventing federal enforcement against cannabis activities that comply with state laws, and so nothing would explicitly bar the Justice Department from working with state and local law enforcement to go after bad actors. The CJS bill also keeps intact another longstanding rider preventing uh, Department of Justice interference in state hemp research programs so they don't want you to research shit <laughs> they don't want you to sell shit they don't want you to do nothing uh, meanwhile the appropriations committee is also taking up a spending bill on tuesday covering interior uh environment and related agencies that has report language attached to addressing illegal cannabis operations on public lands marijuana on public lands the committee is aware that trespassers illegally grow marijuana on public lands in california these unlawful activities harmfully impact public water, soil, and wildlife. The committee supports Forest Service uh, efforts to develop these tools to detect and eradicate grow sites. The committee directs the Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management to continue to operate with state, local, and tribal governments on survey, reclamation, and prevention efforts the maximum extent possible. Additionally, the committee directs each agency to convene and develop a strategy with the DOJ and Homeland Security to eliminate grow operations that are not sanctioned by state or tribal authorities and provide a report to the committee on its efforts and the estimated cost for reclamation no longer than 80, 180 days following the enactment of this act. <sighs> Lots of stuff here, man. Uh, the House Rules Committee uh, last month rejected multiple marijuana-related amendments to a series of spending bills, including proposals to ban cent uh, certain federal agencies from testing job applicants for uh, cannabis and prevent Border Patrol agents from seizing marijuana from state-licensed businesses. The Appropriations Committee separately passed uh, another spending bill last month that was amended to remove provisions safeguarding banks that would uh, work with state licensed cannabis businesses too. Members also uh, uh, reattached a section blocking Washington DC from legalizing marijuana sales that was omitted from the base bill. So it looks like the uh, GOP is intentionally fucking up the rotation <laughs> here. Well, everybody else just wants to get high or at least get their medicine. Um, I, I don't even know what to say, man. This is um, um, uh, the, the, the biggest block party uh, that the GOP has ever thrown on any <laughs> occasion. And it all just uh, it all stems back uh, with uh, Kevin Sabet and uh, the Oracle himself. And uh, just planting these seeds of saving the children. Uh, um, uh, nobody should have access to this. Uh, nobody should have access to banking. Uh, just get this shit out of here. So I don't know, man. Jason, I'm going to leave this one to you, bro, brother, because I don't understand the thinking behind this. There's a, a lot of chances for the GOP to score points um, here and actually uh, um, uh, get something uh, pushed forward. Maybe not even uh, what the Democrats wanted, uh, but they didn't do any of that. They're just blocking everything, saying no to absolutely everything. And... Just, I don't know, man. It's terrible. So I'm Rico Lamid, the dopest dad on the street for a high nine news. And I just, I just, I just want to understand what the fuck is going on here, Jason. I mean, in, in all fairness, um, the, these Republicans are, are, are following the rule making process, which the Democrats are not in this whole rescheduling process. So shout out for them for trying to stop this rescheduling because it's just going to be damaging to our industry and we don't need it and don't want it. I mean, I, I'm calling bullshit on this. This is just, this is all posturing and pandering to their base running up to an election cycle. That They might have got that bill out of committee, but I'd be shocked if it gets out of the House and it's, it's mm -hmm. dead on arrival in Senate. It's not going anywhere. They might be able, they might be effective in blocking, you know, some of the bills that you mentioned, the other bills, Rico, that would have progressed the conversation around cannabis at the federal level, but... There's no way that this this gets out of this gets approved by both both houses of the legislature. I don't think. Oh yeah, I I totally agree with that with that assertion. Uh, 
so I'm totally with you on that. You know, the se- the Senate operates on unanimous consent, and all it takes is is one member of the Senate to throw an anonymous hold on a bill, and that bill is DOA. And we'll never see the light of day. Yeah, and I and I'm gonna give Kevin Sabet one little compliment here. Oh, look at this! Uh, hold on, can we get can I we think- get a sound for this? Can we get a sound for this, Millie? It's Kevin Sabet. I, I think that he is more poetically astute than we are giving him credit for. Oh, he because is. I think 100%. he knows the same thing that we do that that this bill isn't going anywhere. So I'd be shocked if if he and and Sam are actually celebrating anything here. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I feel like uh, uh, Kevin Sabet is the Bizarro World Jason Beck. Yeah, and that, that's the only nice what? thing you'll ever hear me say about him. I, I thought that was awesome. Bizarro world, Jason Beck. Bizarro world. I mean, I mean, Kevin Sabet knows how to how to how to play both sides of the fence. That that is for sure. He definitely is a. Uh is versed in the way of Capitol Hill and how to move around up there. That that's for sure. I mean, he was a he was a you no know, Obama um, area uh, era advisor. I believe Bush he was, Jr. too. Yeah, I think Bush he's, Jr. He's served on on many different yeah. administrations. Like he yep. he definitely he knows yeah. Capitol Hill. Like he's not a dumb person. He just. Yeah, has views and, and pushes dumb, stuff that yeah, none of us agree with it. I I wonder if he yeah, really believes the things that he says. I really wonder. I if, don't think so. No, it's, it's about money. It's definitely that, about that's money. what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Project Sam pays him to be to be their spokesperson and whatnot. And, uh, and they they have they raise millions. Who knows how much? Because they've never released their funding. They just like to threaten people on the internet uh, with cease and desist for accusing them of taking financing from pharma and and alcohol and tobacco mm-hmm. companies, but. Again, we've never well, never seen them release their donor I, list. I, 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 I know I, I know some of their donors personally, and so I I'm I, I'm very aware of uh, some of who who these people are. That's not no, no surprise to me. Um, in, in it would be sense. awesome if, if if it was if if it was um, unearthed that Kevin Sabet was a big stoner himself. <laughs> this motherfucker's just getting. Oh, like, bro, he's just hanging out with Hunter day. Biden, fucking smoking. He, yeah, he like he like leaves these yeah. meetings. I was gonna say, I'd I be like, if he's smoking anything, I don't, I don't think it's weed. I think he might be, he might be, like you said, hanging out with Hunter Biden mm-hmm. uh, and, and some teenagers hanging out with some fucking underage kids smoking weed in his car. Uh, Whoa, I'm gonna call it right now. That, that's my prediction. Yeah, I don't know about hanging right, out with smoked, minors. He's definitely smoking. He's smoking gas station Delta Eight vapes. That's for sure. <laughs> no way, bro. He's maybe probably... he's hanging out. Maybe he's in Kentucky. No, he's, he's in, in he's in DC, you know, bro. Uh, hot boxing with his kids. Hold on, bro. Hot he's boxing in... with his kids and the school nurse. He's in DC. They have self certification. <laughs> he probably sends his assistant over to the little to little trap store. You missed the joke. What what yeah, was Kentucky. the joke? You know, you uh, know he uh, lives uh, in Virginia. You know he doesn't live in DC. Virginia is basically DC, bro. It's all it's yeah, all like man, I mean, I guess yeah. now 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 times have changed. But there there was a time not too long ago where getting caught with weed in Virginia was very different than getting caught with oh, weed in DC. Bro, you are so 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 right about that, which is one of the reasons that I would always I, I can fly remember into an Reagan. Arcview event about eight nine years ago mm-hmm. an arc view event and I, that was one of the only times in recent history that i can remember being paranoid smoking a joint outside because i was like and of course you know it's it's arc view so it's a bunch of rich white old guys and nobody else is sweating i'm like yeah bro like the only one of us here is gonna have a problem <laughs> i don't i'm you not know, buying well, i'm not buying in virginia, that I, I, as 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 a Virginian myself as a native virginia myself if you're ever in virginia and you need a place to smoke man just go into the woods bro Everything goes down in the woods, man. Go <laughs> into the woods. 